One question that I sometimes get asked is how to arrange and print a file so as to be able to fold pages into signatures to stitch them. There are various ways of doing this, but in this video I just show three ways that I've found helpful, all of them free. To do this, we need to understand that a book is comprised of multiple little booklets that are called sections or signatures. And in this example, I show how this model of a signature is actually comprised of four separate pages that are folded together. And in the model, you can see which page goes next to which page. So that shows you how you want it to be printed out. Arranging the pages in this way is called imposition. And commercial printers will do it on a large scale and print out large sheets of paper, which are later folded and cut. But for our purposes, I'm just going to show what one can do with an A4 printer. If you have a larger printer, you can adapt it. And obviously, you can adapt it for American sizes as well. Whether you're creating your own file in a word processor or desktop publisher, or whether you're just using a PDF that you've got from somewhere, um, you, need a, you need to create a PDF document that has each page as an individual page. You then need to impose these separate pages of the PDF so that they will print in the right place on your paper. Now, if your book is going to be A5, then you'll have two pages on each side of your A4 sheet. Or if you've got an A6 book, you'll have four pages on each side of your A4 sheet. Or if you have A7 pages, you'll have eight pages on each side. Or if you have A8 pages with miniature books, you'll have 16 pages on each side. The number of sheets in a signature can vary. It's, it's quite common to do four sheets, which gives you 16 pages, but that can vary and it, it will depend on various things like the length of your text or the thickness of the paper and the amount of swelling that you have. Now, there are various ways in which you can impose your PDF file. If you have Adobe InDesign for desktop publishing. I understand that you can do it in that, but I've never used it, so I, I can't say more. There are also various programs that you can get or buy that will impose for you. But I'm just going to outline and explain three ways that I've used. The first is probably the simplest but also the most hassle and that is to simply manually impose a PDF when each time you print it. Um, I think this would only work for, for an A5 sheet that you're printing um, on A4 paper and I've sometimes done this using Adobe Acrobat, uh, the free one. I think you might be able to do it in, in other programs as well. But for that, you really need to just print each individual signature as a booklet. So before one does that, you'd need to work out your signatures. And I find it helpful to, to make a note of that. Um, and then specify the number of pages you're printing each time. And, and then it should arrange them for you. But that's a bit of a hassle because you have to keep doing it each time. I like to use a wonderful free site called BookbinderJS, particularly for A5 and A6 books. I find it a bit tricky for smaller books. The first step is to upload your PDF file. It gives you options for manipulating your file, which I usually ignore. You then need to specify your paper size of your printer. And I usually choose the duplex option to have all the pages in one file. 
You then need to specify the layout of your page, and it also gives you more options here to manipulate things, which I usually ignore. It then lets you choose how many sheets of paper you'll have in a signature, but it also allows you to customize your own signature. And it gives you the option of adding fly leaves at the front and back of your book. When you've specified everything, you can either preview it or else simply generate the PDF and it will give you a PDF file with everything arranged properly. One thing to note here is that BookBinder.js automatically generates your files so that when you print them, you need to flip them on the short edge. For some sizes, they'll give you the option of being able to flip on the long edge, but it's important to understand the difference between flipping on the long and the short edges, or else they won't print correctly. Another option for imposing that I sometimes use is Impose Online. I find BookBinder.js is great for um, A5 and A6 books, but I find it a bit tricky for smaller miniature books, and Impose Online is great for that. It does involve more work because you have to arrange each page manually, but it does give you the freedom to arrange your pages as you like. So the first step is to upload your file and it will then ask you whether you're including things like bleed and trim marks or paper registration marks. I generally don't do these but you may want to, it all depends on what you're doing. When it asks you to select your imposition type it's important to choose manual. And what you fill in next will depend on the size of your pages and how you're arranging them. What I've done here is for a A8 book, which means that I'll have 16 pages on each side of the sheet. However, because my brain can get rather confused with all this, I find it easiest to first make a physical model. So I'll make myself little booklets that I number as my book would be numbered and I then um, transfer those numbers onto a sheet of paper that's folded to have so many pages uh, and I then use that page when I'm filling in um, on Impose Online and I'll keep that for future reference when I'm doing other books. So I then carefully fill in where all of the pages must go based on my model. And when I've done that, I just have to check any margin details. And then I can tell it to impose before I can download it. And if all is well, it should have given me an A4 sheet with all my pages imposed. Just one thing to note here. I didn't do it in my example because I wanted to keep it simple, but you can also rotate the pages in your imposition. Uh, and that can be a good idea because then you'll have them, the top pages facing downwards so that when you fold them, you get the exact center. So you can do that by tapping on the side of the page numbers so that the H moves first to the side and then to the bottom. The other thing to note is that in this example I did it so that it will be flipped on the long edge just because that was that's the simplest and probably the least complicated way to impose it yourself if you're going to start out. But you can also work it out for yourself how you would need to impose it if you were to flip it on the short edge. I hope that isn't too confusing. You really just need to try it yourself to really get used to it. So if you've found this helpful, then please like and subscribe, etc. It's not the most typical video for me. Hopefully next time there'll be some actual binding involved. Uh, but I hope to get back to that soon. So thanks for watching.